Hi guys, welcome to Bur Harbor Kids Virtual Kids Church. So glad you could join us today. Hey, I'm really excited about today, but I have some things I want to talk to you about. Fireworks is almost here. Yes, I'm so excited, you guys. You gotta start letting me know. Comment down below, have your parents contact me, because it is time. We got a lot of fun stuff. They even have some new fireworks they sent me some videos on. I'm so excited to do this. So let me know what's happening with you and where you're going to be with us um, and what days you'll be with us for the fireworks tent, okay? I'm excited about that. Remember, that is our only fundraiser for the year, so be sure to help us out, okay? All right, um, let's pray and we're going to get started, okay? Lord Jesus, I am so glad to be able to be here just with you, Lord, to be in your presence. Father, I pray that you be with us and just anoint worship today, God. Just uh, comfort our hearts, Lord, and be with us, Lord, as we hear from your word, Lord. Help us to learn to be doers and not just hearers of your word, Jesus. We ask this in your name, mighty name, amen.
It's time to play the exploding fruit game. Everybody stand up and get ready to choose your favorite fruit. For cantaloupe, stand on the left side of the room. For watermelon, stand in the middle. For honeydew, stand on the right. Choose wisely, because if your fruit explodes, you're out of the game! If you chose watermelon, you are out. This time, we have a pineapple, a coconut, and a watermelon. You know what to do. If you chose the pineapple, then you're out. And for the last round, we have a coconut, a cantaloupe, and a pineapple. Good luck! chose the coconut, I'm afraid you're out. Thanks for playing with us. Bye-bye. Hi guys, are you ready to do your memory verse today? Today's memory verse is, the Father himself loves you. John 16, 27. We all know who the Father is, right? God. Very good. Let's say it again together. The Father himself loves you. John 16, 27. Okay, now I am going to remove some of the words. As they come up, you're going to see a picture of the words, and one of the words is going to be gone, and I'm going to see if you can still say it. Are we ready? Here we go. Okay, watch this. The Father himself loves you. John 16, 27. Okay, you guys, that was really good, really good. The Father himself loves you John 16 27 okay you guys that was really good I'm really proud of you you did an awesome job let's try it again we're gonna miss two words this time are you ready okay here we go the father himself loves you John 16 27 Oh, you guys got the hang of this, man. That's crazy. You guys are doing a great job. All right, here we go. One more time. Three words missing. Are you ready? Here we go. The Father himself loves you. John 16, 27. Oh, man, you guys really have the hang of this. That's great. Okay, so let's say it together all of us as loud as you can the father himself loves you john 16 27 great job you guys remember to hide god's word in your heart all right say it to yourself so you don't forget it hi guys we're just gonna get in that place where we can worship with the lord today so just want you to close your eyes and focus on jesus and his amazing goodness to us and let's just worship Jesus together. Here we go.
Hi guys, ready for our lessons today. Let's get started, okay? Let's pray. Lord, we just ask that you be with us today, God. Father, that we would hear your words, Lord. And Father, I just pray that it would cause excitement to grow within us, Lord, as we understand and recognize your word from the Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Again, you guys, just not the same without you yelling amen back to me. So everybody give me a big amen where you're at. Good job. All right. Guys, today I want to talk to you about some pretty important things, actually. Do you know that it's easy to become unhappy and dissatisfied with what you have and think that things would be nicer in another place? That's how a young man felt in the parable that Jesus told in the Bible. This parable is found in Luke chapter 15. All right? There was a wealthy man who had two sons. The younger son got tired of living at home and he wanted to get out and experience life on his own. He wanted to get out and just see the world. Things surely would be better somewhere else. He told himself, I bet it's going to be amazing out there. So he asked for his share of the inheritance. Now, I don't know if you guys know what an inheritance is, but inheritance is money or land or possessions. And in this case, it was money and land and possessions owned by the father in our story. And he would leave them to his family after he died. The father in the story, again, he had two sons. Each son would inherit part of his father's money. One son, the youngest, asked for his share of inheritance before the death of his father. Can you imagine, guys, asking your dad for the money he was going to leave you when he died before he died? That's pretty crazy, right? But he did that. He did it so that he would have the money to leave home. The father granted the younger son's request and he divided the inheritance between his two sons, the older son and the younger son. The father loved his son very, very much. He was not happy that his son was leaving home, but he let his son make his own decision. After receiving his inheritance and money, the son packed up all of his things and he left, he got out of there. He traveled and he traveled, and then he reached this far off country far away from his land and his dad and his family. He was, he was planning to never return home. He didn't ever want to go back there. The son in this parable, we often call him the prodigal son. Now I know that you, you guys that have been in church for a while have probably heard this term used before, prodigal. Well, Pastor Cheryl, what does prodigal mean exactly? Well, it means careless and wasteful. Did you know that? Prodigal means careless and wasteful. So when we say he's the prodigal son, we're saying he was the careless and wasteful son. That's how it describes him. He began spending his money foolishly on anything that he wanted. He just bought and ate and did everything. He did whatever he wanted and whatever he felt like. And while his money lasted, he had a great time. He was just doing whatever he wanted. He had plenty of friends. And then one day, the son's money had all been spent. You guys, can you imagine? He spent it all. Suddenly, he had no place to stay. No more food to eat. Oh, man, what? He also lost his friends, you guys, because they really only were his friends because he was buying everything for them. Besides being out of money and friends, the country where he was living was in a famine. Now, a famine is a time when crops don't grow and there's hardly any food available. Kind of a bad thing. The son realized that he would have to get a job somewhere or he was going to starve. That was not what he was expecting. So he went to the city and he tried to get a job, but no one would hire him. No one in the city would hire him. The only job he could find was feeding 
pigs, you guys feeding pigs. It was hot and dirty and smelly. Ugh, can you imagine? What an uncomfortable job giving food to smelly pigs. This was not the life the son had in mind when he left home. This is not what he thought it was going to be like when he left his father. This isn't fun, he's telling himself. It was fun when I had my money, but it's not fun now. I'm feeding pigs. It's disgusting. The young man was hungry. He hadn't eaten. Even the food that he was feeding the pigs, you guys, he started thinking that would look good. Can you imagine being so hungry the pig food looks good? He had sunk low as he could go. He wasn't getting any lower than that, eating pig food. Had no money, had no friends. Starving, ready to eat pig food. The son realized in his heart he'd made a huge mistake. Things were not so bad at home after all, he started thinking. I was really selfish. The rules at home were for his own good, even though he didn't realize that at the time. His family had good food to eat, and he had a nice place to live, and even his father's servants ate food decent food, better food than he was eating. And here he was, starving. Here he is, wanting to eat pig food. He had blown it, big time. Suddenly, the young man wanted to go home. Maybe, he said, if I return home, my father would hire me as his servant. Yeah! The son knew that he didn't deserve his father's love, and that was okay. He was ashamed of what he had done, but he thought maybe he would be able to work for his father as a servant. At least then he would eat. So the son left the pig pen, left all his little piggy friends, and started the long trip home. It doesn't tell us how long it took him to get home. But when the son reached the far edge of his dad's land, his father saw him coming, and his father got so excited, you guys. He was so happy. He still loved his son, even though he had done wrong things, and he missed him. He missed him so much. The father had eagerly watched and waited for his son to come home, and the father ran to meet his son, and he hugged him. He was so happy. The son knew he had blown it. He was very sorry, and he was so upset for all the wrongs that he had done. He said he didn't deserve to be his son any longer, but that he would work as a slave. The father was so happy that his son was home. And it says this in the Bible. It says the father gave his son a robe and a ring and sandals you guys, those were signs of honor and acceptance. He was bringing him back to the same place in his home where he was as his son. The father made it clear to his son that he loved him and that he forgave him and that he for accepted him and that he wouldn't have him working as his servant. He would live at home as a son. Then the family had a great big feast and everybody celebrated the son's return. Guys, let me show you something. I have a balloon here with me today. We all like balloons, right? Well, we're going to show you this balloon. It represents a person. And the air that I blow into this balloon will stand for the sins that this person has committed. Like maybe lying. Ooh. That was a big one, right? Maybe disobeying parents, because the Lord tells us not to do that. Sinning, disobeying parents. I blew a little extra in there because I'm a parent, and I didn't like it when my kids disobeyed. Stealing. Oh, have you just ever taken something that just maybe you wanted? 
because, well, somebody else had it, and it just would be nice for you to have? Maybe you cheated on a test at school. It's called cheating. Maybe you were mean to somebody and you said some bad things you shouldn't have said. Remember, guys, this balloon represents a person and all the sin that we commit. My fingers are holding the air inside of this balloon. See that? And just as we often hold all of the guilt of everything we do wrong, all tied up inside of us, a person who refuses to ask God's forgiveness for sins traps that sin inside of them. When we tell God that we're sorry for the wrong things that we've done and we ask for his forgiveness, God forgives us and the sin is released. I hope it doesn't sound like that. So if I remove my fingers like I just did, the air comes out. God removes those sin from a person's God removes the sin from the person's life. See how much less there is in there? You can't see it. It's just air. But God removes sins from a person's life. And guess what? When he removes it, you can't see it anymore. Just like you can't see the air from the balloon in here. It's gone. No more to be found. When we ask God to forgive us for the things that we've done, it's not there anymore. Now, I can't see the air that came out of this balloon. Can you? It's like that with our sin. When we ask the Lord to remove the guilt of sin from our lives, we can't see it anymore. It's not there. God doesn't see it anymore. So remember the balloon when you feel weighted down with the things that you're doing in your life, the sin and the wrong things that you do. Don't let the enemy tell you they're still there. They're not. God has removed them, and God is waiting to help you, and God is waiting, just like the dad in our story, to be super excited that you're back with him. God's love is like the Father's love in our parable. Our Heavenly Father loves us so much that he wants us to return to him, come back to him so he can forgive us. He is always willing to forgive us. He is always willing to accept us back. Guys, there is never a time when you ask the Lord to forgive you that he won't. Never. We are all like the sun in the parable, and sometimes what we want to do is go our own way. All of us have that, that com compelling thing that tells us, I want to do it myself. Anybody ever seen a little kid? And they're like, me do it, I want to do it. Instead of getting help. Well, we're the same way. We're like that sun. Something's better. I want to try it myself. We want to go our own way. We might do what pleases us for a little while. We might even do what pleases us for a little while and doesn't please God. And our sin separates us from God like the son was separated from his father. And even though we blow it over and over again, and guys, we are not perfect. We are going to blow it. God loves us. But he wants us to keep trying over and over again. Asking for forgiveness. Don't ever forget that. Satan wants us to believe that we might as well give up living for God. It's too hard. You can't do it. It's never going to happen. You have sin all over you. Those are lies. Those are lies. It's not true. God is waiting with open arms like the father in this story 
for us to admit our sin to him and come back to him and receive forgiveness for our sins. Guys, maybe you have never asked God to forgive you, but guys, today he is waiting for you to come home to him. He's waiting. How many of you today would say, I feel like the son from today's Bible lesson. I've done things. Pastor Cheryl, you don't even understand. I know they wouldn't please God. Guess what, guys? God still loves you. God will forgive you. If you were truly sorry for the things that you've done, if you're asking Jesus for the forgiveness because he's the one that paid that on the cross, remember? Maybe you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, and you can come to the Heavenly Father by just admitting your sin and believing in Jesus. Ask him to forgive you. Will you pray with me today? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sin and that you rose from the dead, Lord. I turn from my sins, God, and I invite you to come into my heart, Jesus, and into my life. I want to trust and follow you, Lord. I want you to be the Savior of, over all the days of my life. Thank you, God. Thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that you love us so much that you forgive our sins. And it's just like the balloon, Lord. We can't see it anymore. Thank you for making our hearts clean, Lord. Jesus, you're so, so special. What a Savior. We ask all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We'll see you later.